Hi everyone, it's Sal Jade and I hope you are all getting here okay and ready for this presentation on how to discover the five most common and biggest mistakes that tarot readers make in the beginning and how you can avoid that. So today I really wanted to bring you this presentation because there's lots more people coming into tarot card success and we have reached 5,000 which is just fantastic and I'm so grateful. It's amazing to have so many people in this group for we've been running for five years in association with tarot card success and so I thought it would be a nice opportunity to come in and just help especially new people and beginners who are struggling a little bit with okay am I getting this right and um, you know how come I have so much struggles and how come I don't understand the tarot and what's wrong with me and maybe it's Sal and her course sucks or maybe it's me and and just being able to reassure you that these are the biggest mistakes that people make and most beginning tarot readers make them including myself so everything that comes into you today is coming from a complete space of non-judgment and as i said i'm going to be saying things and some of them might resonate with you some of them you might go you know what i'm feeling some resistance around that sal resistance is good if you're getting challenged by it or you're resisting it that often means that yes that's something you need to keep working through and also as i said maybe not everything i say will resonate but maybe there are some things that you think yep i need to start doing that and maybe that's where i've been going wrong so I just want to say a quick hello to everyone who's here. We've got Lily and Suya and Kathy. Hello from the USA. So here from Bombay and Lily. Hi. Hi, Sue. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're here, pop in and say hello to the comments. Sometimes the comments go a bit fast and I might miss them. So if I do, I apologize. But pop in and just let me know where you're from. It's so wonderful to see so many. One of the things I love about running a group like this is just seeing so many people from all over the world brought together. Hi, Jenny. I'm going to scroll down so I can read you. Thanks for your advice and help. Thank you. Hi, Delia. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. And I hope you get a lot out of this. Hi, Nick. So what and keep remembering this will be available as a replay so you will be able to watch it again and again if you have to drop out or miss out on bits of it hi cat and hello allison and if you aren't if you're watching this on youtube because i'm going to be uploading it to youtube or you are watching it as a replay in your tarot card success group just ta um, if, and you've got a question for me put hashtag replay just so i know that you're not live and so you don't think have i missed her is she ignoring me hi kate from melbourne hello allison from michigan hello nick michigan Another mission. How do you say Michigander? Is that what you call Michigan? People from Michigan, I love that. Hi, Shiv from India. Hello, Kat from South Carolina. So, the first thing I want to talk about, and I'm also, if you want to ask questions, if you could just save them to the end, that would be great. So, just jot them down as you're going, and I can answer them all at the end for you. So the first thing I want to talk about, and it's interesting because I've got a few questions that other people have asked me when they knew I was doing this, and I said, yeah, just any, anything you want me to answer, just pop it in the question box and I'll answer it for you. And I've got some of those questions here and they relate very much to these tips I'm about to give you. So the first, hi Sandra from Ontario, and hello Red Moon from Los Angeles and from Olive Branch, Mississippi, we have Pamela, hello. So the first thing that's really important to remember as a tarot reader, and every, nearly every single tarot reader does this, by the way, this is people that I've managed as tarot readers, people that I've taught, myself, people I know, my own mentors, is that they start learning the tarot and then they expect themselves to be an accurate expert. And I'm going to say something a little bit controversial here. When you start learning the tarot, Try not to make your first aim to be as accurate as possible because it's a little bit like trying to learn a language and doing a course on how to learn a language or reading a book and then going to a new country, say you're trying to learn Italian and you go to Italy and you expect to walk into a dinner party and fluently speak with everyone who's been speaking Italian for 20, 30, 40 years. This is the high standard and expectation that most beginning tarot readers expect for themselves. So they might have either been to a tarot reader and gotten an amazing reading or seen other people in groups and, and thought, oh my gosh, I'm, how come I'm not getting this? 
When you're a beginning tarot reader, the most important thing to focus on is just learning the cards. So I can't stress that enough. Like, if you can take anything out of tarot card success, it is my teddy bear rule. And I had to, I mean, part of the reason I wanted to do this was because I was I was doing my morning walk and I was thinking the other day and I was thinking, how come whenever people struggle and I say, well, are you practicing first on a teddy bear or on pretend clients? They never write back and say, yes, I did that and thank you. And I thought, Oh, people have resistance to this because they think, but Sal, a teddy bear is not going to tell me if I'm accurate. Or if I write a pretend client like Jane and say, when will Jane, or what do I need to know about Jane getting married? And, you know, Jane's not there to tell me if I'm right or wrong. The point of tarot in the beginning is not to be right or wrong. It's actually to just know and understand and make a connection with the cards. So I'll say that again. Forget accuracy in the beginning, focus on making a connection and understanding with the cards. So you can do that by, say, the ace to ten of, of wands in the beginning, and even if you're halfway through the course or you finish the course, you can go back and do this. Go back and create your own dot points. People talk a lot about cheat sheets, and as you know from this course, I'm not a fan of them because your beautiful connection to the course will come from you connecting with the cards, not somebody saying, this is how you learn tarot as quicker as possible. Being comfortable calling yourself a beginner like every time you offer to do a reading in this group, I've got a beautiful little template, a PDF template that you can look at and that you can send to people and say, can you please give me feedback? And it, it follows a very detailed process to make sure, A, that you're not attracting people that just want a free reading and are not going to support your beautiful learning journey. But B, let people know that when you're giving them a reading, you're a beginner. You're not expected to be a world expert and have the, the equivalent of a 20-year-old tarot reader in your experience. Understanding the tarot, people often ask me, you know, can I do the tarot card course if I'm not psychic? And what I say is that the first thing is, is that tarot will open up your intuition. It is a language that speaks to the soul. It is the universal language of all human experience. And it's, it's, you know, look, millenniums old, it's come from such a long, long, long lineage of being able to understand deep spiritual lessons. So in terms of being a beginner, like you're new, you're learning that language for the first time. So be really patient with yourself. And I'm going to do myself a bit of a disservice right now. Try not to rush through the course. And the reason that's, I'm letting you in on a bit of a trade secret. So with Udemy, like the quicker people finish my courses, the higher I rank, basically. So it's better for me in my rankings if you finish my course in a day or in two days. I don't want you to do that. I would rather my course ranking be, be lower and you take time to really process each of the suits and practice and practice and practice with a pretend client. Ask 20, 30, 40, 50 different questions of the different suits with pretend clients until it becomes second nature for you. That to me is the easiest way to learn. And, but I will say it's not the quickest and that's the problem with tarot. People want to learn it in five minutes or in one day or and they, and they kind of gamble everything or they get angry and frustrated at themselves or the course because they feel like they don't get it. But it was never something that was meant to be learned in a day. It's like magic. Like you wouldn't go and study magic like you say Harry Potter, for example, in, in the early years when they first go to Hogwarts, they don't they don't go fast forward to the great to the sorry the final years and do all that really advanced stuff they build up to it and and tarot is the same it's like any skill that you learn if you're a nurse you don't just sit there and study the book and then go in the next day and work with a heart surgeon as the number one nurse in a heart surgery so just remember that you're expected to take your time you're expected to be practicing and you don't need it to be instantly straight away accurate you build up to that and very few there's some exceptions to that i will add that because there's always exceptions so for me if you've already done a lot of intuitive psychic work then you'll probably pick it up a bit easier because you already might recognize some of the symbols you might understand things a bit more you might have had a history or have friends that do tarot readings so you might pick it up easier 
If you have what I call generational influence, so say like I'm in my three month advanced tarot program at, program at the moment, one of the ladies in there has like an aunt that taught her, you know, been doing tarot on the kitchen table when she was five years old. And so she kind of has had it in her life her whole life. So obviously it's going to be a bit easier to pick that up, a little bit like if you've got people speaking Italian around you that are your family, but you never really learn it, you still kind of get bits and pieces. And also, like people who are, I know this is an odd one, but often people who study art or who are artists often pick it up a bit easier because they're already communicating in that language that is very different to our scientific brain. How does this work? Why doesn't this make sense? <laughs> So in the beginning, expect the tarot won't make sense. Expect that you're a beginner and when you are doing readings for other people, let them know straight off the bat that you're nervous and that you're a beginner. And as I said, if you could go through each of the suits and each of the major arcana and, and then practice them all together. So I, I saw someone um, post actually today in this very group saying I'm stressed out because I've done a, um, the, the horseshoe spread and I've got the death and the devil and this and this and I and I looked at the reading and I got excited and I went oh wow I can see how that's going to unfold but that's like over a decade of professional reading that allows me to instantly look at something and not think that it's the world is ending and that person should be very depressed and their life is over. That's because I've spent years studying it and understanding it on that level. And you can do that, but you've just got to practice first on things that are not real. I know it sounds strange and maybe, and I'm sure there's a lot of tarot readers out there that would disagree with me. I'm only sharing with you my process about how it worked for me. I practiced a lot on pretend clients and on Teddy and then I suddenly got the cards so much better. And then I, and then when I, when I was practicing with friends and they were asking me big serious questions and that's something else that often beginners do, they will practice on someone like say their best friend comes to them and says I don't know if I should leave my husband I don't know what to do can you give me a reading and you're like a third of the way through my course like that's not a good time to be giving someone a reading that's going to dramatically change their life like the the subtleties that are in the tarot and the nuances that you'll read as you practice more and more are best reserved for when you are like that those big questions and that takes a bit of time so please don't be frustrated with yourself if you're not getting that accuracy straight away please don't worry it doesn't mean that you're never going to get it it just is a, is a time thing that takes time and I'm, I'm hoping to share some inspiration for you when I did my first reading when I was learning and I decided I wanted to become a professional tarot reader I got as my end result the three of swords which is pretty much one of the worst cards you can ever get for an outcome if you're asking about the success of your business <laughs> and it was just about a matter of me going back in and looking at the cards but I realized because my approach was wrong I was expecting to learn I'm an Aries with an Aries ascendant I'm, I, I'm someone who wants to learn something and know how to do it in 10 minutes and get frustrated if I can't and, so, and if I can't then I go well that's too hard the tarot has been an amazing spiritual journey for me because I actually was forced to just take it incredibly slow and treat Treat it like the beautiful craft that it is. It's not Excel or PowerPoint that you can learn in a day workshop and go in and have a formula. It's something that takes time. So that's my first tip is please treat yourself gently as a beginner. Don't expect yourself to have the accuracy of people who have been reading for years. And when you are connecting with people and asking and, they, and, and practicing on people, let them know up front, I'm a beginner, I'm nervous. Let me know what I get right. If I get anything wrong, that's okay hey, that's normal, I'm a beginner, I'm just starting to understand the cards. And as I said, please go back and practice with pretend clients and get comfortable knowing the cards first and then move on to real people. It, it will make such a difference. So I'm going to go on to my next one, which is, um, I just wrote, so that Isla says, I've been practicing three cards for a while, so I'm comfortable. And that's perfect. Sometimes that's all you need to do. And remember, three cards are just meant to be for the next couple of months. It's a great way to say what's going on in the next couple of months, like getting really, really, really sure of just taking your time with the material. And Stephen just said the same thing. Doing another course with someone about the third eye, just take your time. There's, there are no prizes for finishing the course as quick as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Udemy doesn't give out cash prizes for that. <laughs> Probably some of us wish they would, but they don't. Um, so just take your time. Be gentle. 
let people know and practice, practice, practice before you get on to real people, just so that you feel like you know them. Now, um, Karen mentioned, she said, you know, is there a technique that I can learn? And as I said, I know people are fans of cheat sheets. And I wanted to give you a few reasons. Another in the, in the course, I talk about why I don't like cheat sheets. But another reason I don't like them is because they like if you if someone's paying you for a 45 minute reading, and you're doing a seven card spread, like the horseshoe, and you're just rattling off learnt, like learnt dot points that you've learnt from someone else's cheat sheet, that reading's gonna take you probably all of 12 and a half minutes. <laughs> Trust me on this, because I've tried it. The way you get good at a connected, intuitive, inspiring, empowering reading that's really gonna help your client or someone that you're reading for, is that you need to take the time to journal what each card means for you or journal what the meanings are for you now i have seen some fantastic examples in this group of people who have like way beyond even what i did like they've gotten a second deck of cards and they pasted the fool on one page and put dot points of their own and then how they feel and when they've been in that experience this connection between what the fall means and when I've been the fall is the most powerful memory association technique that you will ever learn. Trust me when I tell you that. So, it, like for me, and and then people get stuck. Well, they go, well, so I've never, I've never really been the fool, and I've never, like, I've never had the, I've never had um, the seven of cups, and I've never had X, Y, Z. And it's the first thing is you will find if you take your time. And most people don't like that answer. They'd rather me just give them the answers and run away and learn it in 10 minutes. But take your time with each card. And if you honestly cannot think of a time where you have had the emperor as your master lesson, where you've had a boss or a parent or a partner dominate you and make you feel like you, you don't have any power, if you've never had that, then try to think of someone you know who has. All of us have had friends in those positions or relatives, or then go one step higher and think about a television show. Like the average movie that is well written will have, like Casablanca or one, even the classics, will have that journey of the major arcana in it, where the hero goes out on a quest and, and then things go wrong and, and then they've got an opponent, which is, the, which is the devil and also the emperor. And those things happen in nearly every movie we watch. So take your time to make those associations that's when it'll come through for you when you're doing a reading for someone you will suddenly go oh my goodness this person's gotten you know they maybe have they've got the devil I know what my own addictive patterns are <laughs> so it straight away becomes these addictive patterns of mine become something you remember not three quick dot points that you're rattling off that someone else has given you on a cheat sheet so journal each card what it means to you when you've had that experience how it made you feel how it made you feel powerless when you get the the star, like you've come out of a really bad time and suddenly, say for example you've been unemployed for a long time and suddenly you get a job and, and you feel like you love the job and everything's falling into place, that's the star. So go in and find your own individual connection to each card. If you are over 21 years old, there is a huge chance that you've had many of those experiences, so please do that. I feel like that's probably one of the parts of the course that most people resist doing. And that's because they go, I don't know how to journal or that feels too hard or that's going to take me too long. Just just give it to me quicker. And I go, no, 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 like, trust me, you will, I mean, there's different opinions about how to learn, but for me, that's how I learnt. I learnt by making every single card my card and my experience. And and for me, I think you will learn much better if you do that. And as I said, if you're struggling, if you go, well, I don't, I've never had a nine of swords where I feel like I've been sleepless and restless and anxious and and I can't sort of, my head's doing my, a number on me. Have you ever had a friend with anxiety or stress or depression or who everything feels more um, scarier than it really is? Have you ever had a friend go through that experience or who's overreacted to things? That's, that's a classic nine of swords. So go through and take that time. Even if you, wherever you're up to now, start doing it from here on in and then you can go back to the beginning and, and catch up that way. That to me is the biggest learning thing and, and you're gonna laugh about why I was inspired to say this today. The other day I was sitting on the couch watching Top Gun with my husband and I hadn't watched it for about 15 years and my husband said to me, he goes, oh, when did this movie come out? And straight away, it was like, in, straight away, in two seconds it was 1986 and I knew that because I had a flash 
of when that Danger Zone song came out and it was the summer of 86, 87 and it was playing everywhere and the film clip on the music channels that I watched on Saturday mornings in my pyjamas and going and visiting my friends and riding into town on my bike. Like That was the summer of Danger Zone and I knew, I, knew, I was like, Top Gun came out in 86 and maybe the beginning of 87 but definitely 86. That wasn't me looking and rumorizing a date. It was an association that came from a memory. So please give yourself that time to remember how the tarot can connect to you and you know if as I said if, if you're blank then find someone else who might have had that experience and so that as I said that will connect you so much more so I'm going to okay got lots of wonderful questions here I will answer all of these at the end there's some really great questions I'll move on to the third one now, and that is, and now of course I looked at the questions and I've totally forgot, which is why I tried not to answer the questions. Um, oh, so I've, I've seen recently, and I've seen a lot more, I mean, with so many people have been trying to launch either their tarot career or just learn how to get really good by practicing on Facebook. And that is so good. Like that's why I created this group. I want you guys to get in there and practice with each other. I've, you know, I've seen in so many amazing miracles come from these types of groups. However, my, my one little warning is, and those of you who have done my Master Health Readings course, which follows this is one of the courses that follows this about how to do health readings and how to look after your own psychic wellness, and also my Psychic Readings Intermediate level and my Love Readings course, I talk about if you are broadcasting live in Facebook, so if you're doing a Facebook Live reading the way I'm doing right now, but you are picking people out and you're answering their questions, this is not something I'm a fan of especially if you are a beginner like if you are a beginner as I mentioned before you're in this vulnerable stage where you're just learning and you're broadcasting out there and you don't know who is watching you like you do like we've got 5,000 wonderful people in this group but yes I can't guarantee the honesty and integrity of every single person in this group I, I can't that's impossible so and it's like that for most groups like the majority of groups are really great and have amazing people that are attracted to the energy but occasionally people jump in and they just take and they act on their own little stage and they just think that you know the most important thing is that everybody gives me free readings and I'm not gonna and I'm gonna be really harsh and judgmental or I'm gonna test people and I'm you know we have these people and if you're a beginner this is going to be so confronting for you and also keep in mind that when you are reading in a mass thing like this is something that really experienced readers sometimes even struggle with like you've got to learn how to discern from your energy and someone else's energy and the other 50 people that are watching it and consider that most people who are watching things on Facebook probably including some of you right now you know could be either on a bus or you could be texting your boss as well while you're watching me on Facebook you could be or well, not many because most of us are in lockdown but you know, like you could be you know cooking dinner and talking to your kids and then looking back or watching a movie and then watching it and then emailing and texting and what's happening all at the same time you are never going to get a, a nailed down accurate reading if someone just writes what do I need to know about my boyfriend are we going to stay together and then runs off to the toilet and then does five other things then comes back and then you know like their energy is not even really there that's why I think in the beginning personally you're much better off focusing on those one-on-one -on -one readings take that pdf template that is in this group you just type hashtag pdf or go into your how to join the facebook group in tarot master tarot card success download the pdf and give that feedback uh, sorry feedback templates for one-on-one -on -one readings build the rapport that way it's a much better way of doing it i have seen some really unfortunately ugly behavior in groups that come from Facebook live readings I've seen people post some of the most nasty things and I don't want you to be exposed to that I really don't like yes you're gonna have not very great experiences sometimes as a tarot reader but you definitely don't want to be putting yourself out there to have those early on in the in the day in the game <laughs> you really don't trust me so take your time by building up one-on-one -on -one. you might think that quant and, and this is something else I see in, in this group as well in other groups you might think I'm gonna I'm gonna put in I'll do 25 readings um, in this group and then think that's going to be a great way to test yourself straight away 
I would rather do 25 readings at a mind, body, spirit festival where people are actually sitting in front of you and you're connecting with them than in a Facebook situation where you're messaging each other through Messenger, which gets very messy, where you can lose the messages. Um, sometimes you don't even know what people's real names are, by the way. Like, I mean, obviously in Facebook, you can put any name you want. You could be Diggory Dig and people won't know that your name's really Oliver Hamish. So that's another thing. Like the realness that can come through in a reading, it's much better up built up with that one-on-one -on -one rapport and then if you feel really comfortable going to those groups but be aware like do some research check and see what happens when people broadcast live and do readings in particular groups like are people supportive are they loving and and are they generous in their praise and generous in their gratitude are all they just taking and arguing and and not being at, that respectful so that's just one little tip i'm giving you about please don't and that's and that's one of the reasons i don't allow some of you might sometimes go, why does Sal have all these strange rules? I don't allow mass readings in this group for privacy reading reasons because we've got 5,000 people here and I want to make sure you're protected as much as possible. That's why I say take it off the group and do it via email or via messenger. But I also think because, as I said, everyone jumps on and picks up all this energy and you're sharing really personal and sometimes intense stuff in a public forum and energetically that cannot be that good sometimes for you. Facebook groups are amazing for support, but you've got to be discerning. And so that's why for me, I say, please don't broadcast mass readings into the group or other people's mass readings into the group. So that's just my next tip. Be do things gently when you're trying to learn. Like, be find supportive, loving people. Please don't read for your friends and family if they're not very generous and loving and kind. <laughs> like, read for them if you know they're going to support you and they're going to be your best cheerleader. That's who you should be reading for. Um, so yes, that's just another little tip about that. Okay, now the fourth thing, I'm actually, I might take some time now and answer some questions. Let me go right back up here. There we go. Yeah, so Stephen mentions oh, Stephen mentions about take your time, you know, don't don't rush, you know, take that beautiful time. There is no running race with this. Stephen, and he also mentions he's studying fine arts and approaching the carts, dissecting them like they were paintings. That is so beautiful. But that is such a nicer way to do it than looking at a cheat sheet. Like it's like, okay, how does this intuitively and on a soul level affect me? Um, okay. No, Kathy, that is that's a really interesting myth. I love these myths. Is it true that you can't buy your own cards? The problem with sitting around waiting for someone to buy you some cards is that if you don't have friends and family that like or trust or believe in the tarot, you're gonna have them. you're gonna be waiting a really long time. You can buy your own cards. Um, yeah, so please ignore that myth. As I said, it's not. It was probably around a time where that was more practical. It, I don't feel like it's something that's practical now, especially because so many of us now have to order our cards online. So that's what I would say. Yes, you can order your own cards. Um, so dear, I'm a visual artist and look at the cards as pictorial quality. How should I keep away my artistic preoccupations while practicing? Oh, I know what you mean. You're thinking this isn't a very nice card. Look, I think and that's an interesting one. If that's really affecting you, I would maybe then look at another deck that whose art you appreciate more. Um, it's probably a little bit like my uncle who's a sound engineer and it's really hard to take him to gigs because he'll sit there and, and critique and criticise what the sound of the bass player sounds like in this acoustic hall. <laughs> it can interfere with the enjoyment of the process, especially when you have to hear about it. Um, I would just, just go to, just ask your angels, guides, your high priestess, just just to just say okay can you just take the that part of me away we're not critiquing the pictures we're just trying to discover what those images and symbology and that mean on a deeper level and how that connects that's what i would do um there are oh, mary's replying to kathy no i've had cards speak to me as i pass them yes yeah, so true cards will speak to you so by your own Hi, good. Hi, awesome. So if you've got any more um, questions, just pop them in there. Now, something else I wanted to mention, I'm going to go on to my new one, actually, but that reminded me. 
Something else, uh, I have a deck that is entirely artistic with no words or titles and it speaks to you. Absolutely. And I have oracle card decks like that too. Like they just speak to me on this other level. And that's fine too. As I said, like don't feel like you have to have as much information as possible. And in fact, like um, something else that I notice a lot of beginners do is they'll get maybe a third of the way through my course and they'll jump on the Q&A board and say, oh, Sal, can you teach me about numerology and symbols and astrology and can you teach me about, you know, like all this in-depth stuff when they haven't mastered the basics yet. And the reason why I have a separate advanced level program is because the basics need to be, the foundations need to be mastered first. So like with languages that like, you know, like the grammar and the nuances need to be mastered. Then, and I'm I'm in my three month program now, and I've even got we're in week four, week five, and I've even got people in there who have been, done tarot card success saying to me, after they finish the symbology lectures and the numerology lectures and the extra stuff, they're like, oh, Sal, there's so much information. I'm finding it's kind of distracting me a bit, and I'm like, yeah, it does. Like, try to get the basics and then go in, unless, as I said before, if you are an artist, like if you're an artist and you already speak or write or connect in symbols, then you might find learning that stuff a bit easier in the beginning. But it can sometimes be too much fact overload and it's sometimes better just to nail the basics first. So I hope that helps for you guys that are thinking, maybe I should be learning, maybe it'll make me a better tarot reader if I learn all this other big, big higher end stuff first. And I would say, look, stick with getting comfortable where you are knowing the cards. That's your big priority. Now, the fourth thing that often I see with beginning tarot readers, and I had this myself, so please, when I tell you <laughs> that this is so common, like most people who want to be professional tarot readers, and some of you might have heard me say this before, if you want to be a tarot reader and you want to be a professional especially, then please understand that you might have some blocks when it comes to putting yourself out there as a professional or understanding and trusting the cards. It's really natural to have blocks. This is not something to fear. It's the tarot for me is as much of learning the tarot is as much as a spiritual journey as any other journey you will know in life. Like you could go to meditate in India or in an ashram for three months and have all these spiritual experiences. Trust me, you will have just as many spiritual experiences learning the tarot and trusting your journey. I know Kellen mentioned, he mentioned, he goes, well, I find myself that I keep going back to the books. Is that okay? Absolutely in the beginning. You know, you're learning. That's fine. Be the fool. You know, be some, be the page. Be the page of pentacles and the page of wands. Be the three of pentacles. Those, those cards that say you're just learning. That's totally fine. So, you know, please don't judge yourself for that. But also you might get to a stage where you go, okay, I've been doing everything that Sal's just said. I've gone away and I've journaled to the cards and made them make sense in my language and my voice. I've created my own notes and taken notes throughout the course. I've practiced with Teddy. I've practiced with other people. I'm still stuck. That's the point where you say, okay, maybe I've got some blockages. Maybe I've got a third eye blockage. Maybe I've got some past life terror and fear about using my psychic gifts. Maybe my family's ultra religious and they frown about it and I'm afraid of losing their love. So we can all have so many different blocks. And those of you who have done psychic readings intermediate level, I know that I go in and identify 26 different blocks that most beginning psychics have. <laughs> 26 and I give you suggestions on how to shift and heal them but it's natural and normal to get to a stage where you feel blocked that is okay like that is normal but if you are wanting to be a professional I would say like if you just want to read for yourself generally then it's probably not such a big deal but if you want to be a professional and earn income then I'd say you probably need to either do some courses like my courses on how to release your blocks or someone else's courses, or see a spiritual healer, see someone who does Reiki to think about the third eye, or to do lots and lots and lots of journaling about these blocks and where they come from. If you have money blocks, and this is quite common, so say you say you, your whole life you feel like you've struggled with money, becoming a professional tarot reader is not going to chase that away. Like it, trust me, <laughs> it won't. You will still take those blocks with you if you're not willing to look at, okay, how can I master abundance and clear these fears of earning money or these fears of holding on to my money? So just keep that in mind. 
most readers have blocks it's normal it's natural all you need to do is go okay how can I heal this do I need to see a professional shall I do one of Sal's courses shall I look at other Udemy courses and see if that can help me and just know that it's an ongoing work in process like the gorgeous Louise Hay said you are always learning and you're always shifting your stuff you know it's, it's part of the journey so be kind to yourself and go I'm going to spend a bit of time looking at that and I know a lot of you out there might go that sounds so hard Sal I don't want to do it I really don't and that's fine like that is your free will and choice all I'm saying is that it helps you in your journey to be a professional reader if you're willing to go in and look at that and look at what may be blocking you on that level Okay, so um, Stephen, I hope this video will be available after to rewatch. Yes, it will, definitely. Um, <laughs> Mary, the Two of Swords is the shut up and let me think card, which is how you remember it. See, and that's such a great association of how to remember something when you've been like, oh, I just can't think anymore. I'm just, there's too much going on. Um, okay, so, so here, I'm a trained in Vedic and topical astrology. How should I integrate astrology with tarot? Perfect. And I'm going to tell you something you probably don't want to hear. At this level, don't. Like, leave it on the shelf. Like, if some of your natural known information comes in, then by all means, you know, incorporate it. Like, I already knew a little bit about numerology when I started reading the tarot. And I knew about astrology from a Western perspective. I knew, I knew the qualities of Libras and I knew the qualities of Aries and Virgos. So when there was a card that was associated with that, I kind of got that. So the lesson of... The chariot, for example, of the moon, of, of you know, making sure your emotions don't overwhelm you. Like that's a Cancerian card. I knew that because I knew a bit about astrology, so it helped. But you don't have to know all that straight off the bat. Go through the course, practice. Get as I said, most most tarot readers take up to about six months. Practice for six months and then go. Let's go and bring the astrology in. Unless it's coming in naturally already. If it's coming in naturally already, by all means, throw it in the reading. You know, your clients will love that. But don't feel like you have to master tarot and astrology together on the same page before you've got a good grasp about what the tarot meanings are, is, is my advice with that. Um, so I hope that helps. Can someone do Facebook Live readings for practice? Okay, uh, Min, sorry my love, I'm not very good at reading names. Um, Min Shaki, it's such a beautiful name. Can someone do Facebook Live readings for practice? Well, yeah, in the way that you, uh, I think I'm answering your question correctly. Like if uh, me broadcasting right now, you could all start asking me psychic questions and I could just answer them. But as I said, I don't think it's a good idea, particularly if you are a beginner, because the erratic energy of what's going on on Facebook, like you could have someone doing 50 different things at once. And I've, as I said, I've seen some people get really hurt and really demoralised by Facebook readings, by practising, and I think as a beginner it's not a good idea. Now, Katrina. I did a reading for a friend and she pulled the death card. The reading was around her relationship, but a few weeks later she was diagnosed with acute leukemia and passed away. And now you're having a lot of difficulty, I'm not surprised, honey, using the cards and you don't know how to get past this. Oh, my love, that is, look, it is, there is nothing more terrifying and scary than predicting death or seeing death or anything like that. And my heart really goes out to you. I would take so I would take some time to just go okay I'm gonna just have fun with the tarot like you might feel like you even have a break from it from a little while and I would look at um, I'd also look at playing with oracle cards as well because they're a little bit more gentle uh, and just play with them for a little while until you feel that you've healed a bit on this level predicting really traumatic stuff and it coming true is you know, for me, devastating. I, I can totally understand why that must have knocked you off your socks. And I would just say, and what I would do as well, I had to have, I talk about this in How to Be Psychic with my journey with um, when I first started doing reading, angel readings and, and guide readings for people and deceased people would come in. And it's not what I wanted. I didn't want to be a psychic medium. I didn't want them coming in and they would. And I had to really go away and say, have some stern words with my guides and say, look, please, I, I, I appreciate there's so many wonderful mediums out there that would love to have 
this, but this is not what I can do. This feels uncomfortable for me and I'm, I don't feel like I'm even strong enough to help people with it when it comes to what I'm getting. I don't feel like I'm getting concrete enough stuff to help. Like, And, and I just ask them to just turn it off. So go and have some beautiful, yeah, as Nicole said, it's okay to just use happy cards for a while uh, for a trauma like that. Go and... Um, have some words in meditation with your guides and say, um, for whatever reason that I saw that, I'm just going to trust it. But from now on, please, I, I don't want that happening. I, I don't want to do that. Like I won't I, bring me stuff that's going to really help people on a higher level and that won't leave me traumatized. So that's what I would do, sweetie. And my heart does go out. Like as I said, just be kind to yourself because what happens to us as readers is we take responsibility for what we see and we feel that it's our fault or we feel like we wish we hadn't we wish we hadn't communicated that and we wish you know all this other we wish bad stuff wasn't happening because most of us are very empathic and intuitive and it hurts to see pain and trauma so just be kind and and say to yourself wow that was full on I pulled the death card and as you said it was about the relationship so it wasn't even a general and and just say okay that energy was around her it came in and Speak to your guides and if you don't if you're not comfortable doing anything like that, like I know I'm not, then just speak to your guides and say, Okay, that was it, once, one off, we're not doing any more. <laughs> like shut that off, whatever that is, and ask them to just help you feel soothed and help you feel that your like your predictions aren't gonna lead to bad things is what I would do. I'd I'd look at that, my love. Um, and yeah, as Nicole said, using the happy cards for a while. Okay, if anyone's, I hope that's helped, Katrina. As I said, that's a really, really difficult situation. If you've got any more questions, just pop them in, and I'm going to go into the final tip now, and that is the, I talk about excess pressure, and a lot of people have this excess pressure where they feel like they have to get really good straight away. Something else beginning tarot readers do is they also gamble everything and expect that they're going to be able to be a professional in two weeks. Now, can I say very lovingly and gently, I don't want to put anyone off. I want you all that want to be professionals to go out there and be a professional. Being a professional tarot reader is one of the most amazing things in the world and I love it and I want you to love it. But it is, you've got to think for a little second what you're asking of yourself, especially those of you who want to be online tarot readers. And if you missed my, a few months ago, I did a three key essentials to be being an online tarot reader. I did a, a free thing that I uploaded in this group onto YouTube. I will pop the link in here for you to watch. But please understand that you're asking yourself to learn about how to be an entrepreneur, how to be a business owner, how to earn income if you've never run your own business before, and how also to learn and master the tarot. These are four big things that you're asking of yourself. And I'm not saying it's in, it, it has to be a hard slog, but it does have to take time and energy. And you will need to, like if you want to succeed in, in selling your readings on YouTube, then you need to learn how to use YouTube. Like you can't just <laughs> press buttons and think suddenly people will throw money at you. So... Be really conscious that you will have to learn how to do things. I have some psychic business programs. Lots of people out there have psychic business programs. There's ones available on Udemy. Like, be aware that you, if you want to be an online reader or you want to be an entrepreneur and run a business, learn a little bit about how to do that. Because my biggest regret about being a tarot, professional tarot reader is that I didn't do this in the beginning. I threw myself out there and I learned on the job and I made a gazillion mistakes and I spent a ton of money on stuff I didn't need to spend money on. So, And I bought a thousand million domains, by the way. <laughs> Lots of domains for different aspects of my businesses. And so, you know, learn how to master in small steps. Like, please don't quit your job tomorrow and say, I'm going to be a tarot reader in two weeks. Maybe some people can do that. But in my experience and of watching readers and myself and entrepreneurs I know, it does take time to learn and master things. So give yourself a bit of patience. For me, as many of you know who have known me for years, I was working six jobs at once while I was building up my tarot practice. Like I was doing all these other different background small jobs to just keep paying the rent. And that way I didn't have that pressure to succeed in, in two weeks time because, and I didn't have to get desperate because I did have other income behind me. So I hope that has helped. 
Um, let's have a look now. Who else has got some questions? I've got one more tip for you as well, an additional one. Stephen, I ordered the Golden Girls Tarot deck yesterday, so it should be a fun deck to work with. Someone posted a picture of that in here with um, Estelle Getty and the Betty White. <laughs> that was awesome. I think that's wonderful. So you can be cheeky. Um, they can, although I can be cheeky, so I hope that wouldn't come out because they were very cheeky on the show. Look, you can interpret it how you want. You know, don't feel like you have to do exactly as the card deck tells you. Um, thanks for being a friend, Blanche, <laughs> Nicole says. Krishna, what do you think about practicing readings online in real time over chat or video versus going away and writing up the reading in your own time? Which is better for your growth when you're a beginner? That's such, look, that's a beautiful question. I haven't been asked that in that word before, Krishna. Thank you. Look, I, are you talking about like the difference between doing an email reading or practicing and, and writing it up? I think, I think for me, I prefer personally um, doing like a Zoom reading like this with two people in front because I do feel like you do pick up a lot of information building a rapport with people one on one. And the best way I can give you an analogy of that is if you are doing online dating. So any of you like me who have done online dating before and you can email someone and you know message them and da 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 and they sound like this great person and you think, wow, I'm really attracted to this person and then you meet them in line, on person and they're totally, they're not what you think or feel, even if you've seen their photo. And I feel like I love email readings, like I teach how to do email readings in my three month program. I think they're a very valuable thing to do. But in the beginning, I think you want to be building that rapport by looking at someone and, and tuning into their energy a bit by just having a conversation with them in the beginning. You'll get better back and forth. And what I mean by that is readings are easier when you are going through and thinking, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to ask this person why this doesn't make sense. And they give you that information and you go, oh, that connects with that card. This means X, Y, Z. But if you're just doing a reading from afar where there's no interaction, it can be harder. I mean, it's not impossible, but I think as a beginner, you're much better off trying to jump online and, and see each other personally. Um, it doesn't mean you can't, as I said. I mean, obviously, in this group, people do beautiful readings for each other when they go off and write it up. But if you can do this, I would do it. I think it means, and I think you get more comfortable quicker with picking up some of those nuances but I will say if you are really shy and you are an introvert and you think you're going to be so nervous doing it like this then do it the writing up way go off and write it up instead but that's I mean you're much better off not putting yourself in a situation where you're the whole time looking like a, a scared meerkat like you don't want to do that because that'll throw you off your reading you're much better off going away if you're feeling really scared and nervous Hi, Santana. Hello. <laughs> Anastasia, it is a full-time job. Yes, you read private and online. It's a lot to do. Thank you. And this is what, you know, I, I love to dispel this myth and not because I want to be someone who makes people go, oh, no, but... It's because I, I want to help and prepare you, and I wish someone had told me this in the beginning, that it's not simply about learning the tarot and practising, it's about going out there and learning the language of how to promote yourself online. It's, it's different, and it's doable. Once you get to do it, it's easy. It just is another new skill to learn. Uh, Mary, replying to Krishna, she does that. It helps read the person. April, how do you overcome self-doubt and perfectionism to get to the point of starting a business? Okay, so for me, how I did that was there was a couple of ways. A, yes, practicing, but B, I do a lot of tapping. So any of you who have done my higher, my intermediate level courses that follow these ones, I do a lot of tapping, and that's why I created the Boost Your, EFT, Boost Your Psychic Gifts with EFT Tapping uh, course for the reason that every time I wobbled about oh my god I'm not going to make money I'm not going to make money I'm not going to be able to pay my rent I'm risking this people are going to hate me they're going to give me negative reviews I'm not good enough I stuck with this and I did this and I'm saying every day like and it does that's what I mean it takes love and grit and determination but I did it every day every time I felt that wobble come up when I had to go out there and I can and I did do some crazy out there stuff. I went and read at a Mind Body Spirit Festival, as I said, and read 17 people in a row when I'd only been reading for a few months. But I, I just tapped 
and, and calmed myself down. If you meditate, then meditate. If you use crystals, use calming crystals. Like there are ways to calm yourself down, but also sometimes it takes a little bit of a, a journaling adventure, shall we call it, and a soul journey. Why am I scared? Where is this coming from? Is it coming from a past life? Am I fearing I'm not good enough because as a kid I was bullied? Like look at where the not good enough feeling is coming from and accept that actually every single reader I've ever known feels nervous about starting a business. And like sometimes accepting that and going, this is actually normal, you know, that, that to me is a sign of humility and a sign of actually, okay, if you're willing to look at why, then you, you'll go much quicker and faster. So that's what I would look at. Uh, I hope that's helped. April, Nick, where does one find more information for your three-month program? I don't remember seeing that on you to me. No, this is something that I run once a year, my three-month program. It's like a VIP program that I run. I'm about a third of the way through it now. If you email me at sal at saljay.com, I can show you how to get involved or what, what I can give you more information about it. So just go to sal at saljade.com and just send me an email and say, hi, it's Nick. I saw you on the Facebook Live and I can send you some info about that. Um, do you really have to have a particular place to read your cards? That's a great question. No, no. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a suitcase entrepreneur myself sometimes. I do readings traveling around the world. Not at all, but you do need to have a quiet place. You do need, and you do need to spend, if you're going to be um, anywhere and everywhere, and I've read anywhere and everywhere, you are going to need to make sure that you spend at least, say, 15 minutes beforehand getting very grounded, doing some rituals, doing, um, I, I go into that a lot more in How to Be Psychic and some of my other courses, but just being very centred and making sure you've just got a couple of your tools I mean you can I've done that before where I've been on holidays and I've just got my tarot deck and someone reaches out to me and I jump online and I just do a quick tarot reading for them and you know I've done that before so you can but if you've got a couple of little crystals that you connect with that's good to carry with you too for me just to create that sense of ritual but it's not a must-have and as long as I have to add Try not to be somewhere that's very noisy. If, you, if you're a beginner, if you're experienced, it's easier. But when it's noisy, you've just got to be really conscious of that. And, and also, obviously, because the people that, are, that you're doing the reading with, if you're doing it like this, uh, they're going to pick up on all that noise, which is a bit distracting. Um, and try not to do it in a time or a place where people will interrupt you. So if there are people in your house, put a big sign on the door and, and, and say, please don't come in. Like, this is, this, I need this to be totally quiet. So that's the only thing I would add. Krishna, thanks, so glad it's helping. Oh, thank you, Mary. You've been reading since you were a kid. You passed along from your grandma. I love hearing that. And your classes are giving me new looks on and outlooks on everything. Thank you. Hi, Alexis. Hi, Sanjani. Doing EFT tapping every day on angels and guides related blockages. My readings are becoming more accurate. Awesome. I'm loving this. I mean, that's how I did it. And that's, as I said, that's why I created that course because literally before every reading, I would feel that nerve coming up. I would feel that... What if they don't like me? What if I get it wrong? What if I? What am I even doing? I'm a fraud, and it would. <laughs> it, it all comes up. This is even after three or four years of reading professionally, I might add. And I just do the little tapping rituals that I have to just calm myself down every time. Um, you come up again daily, and know for me, it's about trust. Absolutely, Anastasia. Mostly trusting yourself and meditating daily to help that. I love that. Awesome, you have a shadow workbook. Mary, thank you. Yes, please share that. Thanks for the great advice, Nicole. Thank you. That helps. Yeah, yeah, um, Doreen, instead of EFT, if you're not into EFT, then meditation is great because meditation quiets your mind. And that's all you need to do with your readings is you need to quiet that voice that's saying you're going to be terrible. You don't know what you're doing. What does that mean? Remember when you did that reading before and you were bad and that person judged you? Why are you doing this? Oh, it's hot and I'm sticky. Like meditation, there's none of that, as those of you who meditate know. It's just going within and being present. And being present is a huge part of being a great reader. Oh, I'm hoping I'm saying George right, but I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Mr. Bo. <laughs> 
There, it, for me, there is no energy difference between day and night when doing a reading. Um, those of you out there that are a bit more connected with the moon and mystics may find mysticism may find that they they become more accelerated at night, um, connecting with the stars. Those of you who are like me, who get really tired and sleepy around about 6:30 and start thinking it's time to go to bed. <laughs> I, for a long time, did after work readings because I was building up my business, but I found them quite tiring and draining and I found, I'd found i find that I'd be up all night. So I would never book a reading for, say, 7 o'clock at night and then book one in the morning for 8 or 9 o'clock because I knew that my sleep wouldn't be great. So it, it's totally up to when you feel high energy. I don't feel like there's different energy in different times of the day. I think I've done readings at 5 o'clock in the morning and, as I said, I've done them at 10 o'clock at night. It's it's always up to how you feel in the moment for me. Oh, okay. Uh, Sidhu, is, if a card falls down from a box accidentally, what does it signify? I think, say you're just opening the box suddenly and one card flies out, I think that definitely could have meaning. Um, but for me with tarots, I try not to read too much into four or five or six falling out. Like you'll drive yourself a bit nuts. But definitely look at, oh, what card came out? And maybe have a little bit of thought to it. They're saying, read me, Harry <laughs> says, yes, absolutely. Um, the three-month course, uh, um, Sanjay, I just read, it's, it's not available on Udemy, it's available on a separate platform. So, but it, no, it's not an in-person course. It's done as a combination of online. Um, so just email me at sal at saljade if you want to know more. Okay, so before I get into more questions, I just want to talk about one last thing about how you can avoid one of the big mistakes that beginning readers make and that is when you are on Facebook, I've mentioned that before, and you're, tr and you're going into groups and you're trying to either build up testimonials or feedback or even sell your readings or even direct people to your YouTube channel or your Facebook business page or just to get your name out there and your branding, I'm going to say something that will miraculously change your life if you're not doing this already. And please let me, I'm saying this without judgment too, by the way, and that is take two or three minutes before you enter each group and read the guidelines. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that are administrators of groups, psychic groups, healers group, entrepreneur groups, that will, I've, sat, I've sat there with them, like my, my beautiful friend Tash, and sat there with, she's got 30,000 people in her entrepreneur group and who, who are advertising their services on a day when you're not meant to advertise services, who are doing things on days where they don't, you don't offer that in this group, who are doing posts that are not appropriate for the group. And people have to sit there and delete delete, delete, or they wake up in the morning and they might get like, for me, sometimes I wake up and I'll get three reported posts and then I'll have to go in and see how someone's broken the rules because someone else has reported it. And that's something that you really can avoid by spending two minutes reading the rules or the videos that I create in my courses about how to join the Facebook group. And if you're in a lot of groups, and I do understand that there's a lot of groups you might be in, then take a little note, a little post-it and put it on it beside you and go, these are the rules for this group, just so that you know. And and I tell you why. It's the best analogy I can give you is it's a little bit like say you are a jewelry maker and you want to make jewelry and you want to sell your jewelry. And it's like driving past and seeing a fair and then driving up to the fair and going, oh maybe I could sell my jewelry here. And you drive up and the person who is at the gate says, hi, yes, welcome, you're really welcome here. Yeah, you, you know, you're definitely, there's a place for you here, come in, um, we'd love to have you, we're a community of jewellery makers, we'd love to make, you know, come in, here's some guidelines just to make sure that you know how, the, how this fair works. And then you jump in your car and go and set up and you throw the guidelines away and you never read them. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Like, of course, you're going to start breaking the guidelines and the people that are in the stalls around you will get a bit like, what are you doing? The management will be like, um, sorry, I'm not sure. Did you read that guideline? Like, you're actually not allowed to um, sell things in, in this on this day. On this day, we're just doing community prayer or we're just sharing our resources for our favourite gemstones. We're not actually selling today. And or, you know, like, or even some groups like this group where there's no selling and in that way of you know you can't 
sneakily put you check out my youtube channel that stuff because then everybody does it and it doesn't become a study group anymore so take a few moments it takes two or three minutes to read what the guidelines are and that way your beautiful posts won't get deleted because i know myself i did this all the time when i started facebook i rushed in there like the aries that i am and jumped onto every group and wanted everyone to buy all my stuff and go to all my facebook page and and that's all i cared about and that's I I didn't care about being part of a community. I was very selfish in the way that I dealt with Facebook. And then I had some rude shocks. I had A, some admins in some groups going, hi, can you please remove yourself from this group because you keep breaking the rules and we keep having to delete your posts. Can you read the rule? Or can you please read the rules? I'm kind, you know, please read the rules. Um, You know, da, da, da. Or you get sometimes people that have been in the group, not the admins, who get cranky at you and say, "Um, what are you doing in this group? You know, you know we don't do this. And then it becomes like... I want to help you avoid that. If you are serious about being an online entrepreneur and selling your readings on Facebook... Please do not break the rules of your groups that you go into. Please take the time to learn what each group is and don't do that because what happens is you'll get admins and you'll get people who are the group members starting to go, who is this person who keeps not reading the rules? (laughs) Why didn't they read the rules? And I know it's difficult. I don't like following lots and lots of rules. And I'll be very honest to you, there's some groups I belong to that I go in and I get frustrated by the rules. I go, oh, that's right. Today's a no, I I can't put anything like this on this day. I made a mistake. Sorry. And I delete it. And, you know, I, I make those mistakes still. So there's no judgment on doing that. I just ask you to think about your success as a tarot card reader online and rethink about how you are in groups. See the groups as communities um, of people collectively coming together, not as a place that you can jump in and tell everyone to go to your YouTube channel because that's not what the group usually exists for. There could be avenues for you to do that. And in this group, for example, as I, I, I've, you know, I, I understand that you want to get people to your YouTube channel, you want to get them to your Facebook page or your Instagram thing. But if you're putting links and likes and everything and everyone's doing that, then it just becomes a cluttered, classified thing. But also... Like you can do that when you do your one-on-one practice readings. Like you can say to the people you're reading for, here's my this and that, here's my YouTube channel, here's this, go check it out. Like you can do that that way. But that stops it becoming a bit of a free-for-all. Now, so I hope that helps with just improving your ability to get the most out of the beautiful Facebook groups that you have gone and signed up for. Now... Walid, can I do a reading for when the coronavirus is going to end? Look, that is such a great question, but my answer, sorry, is no. Because I, someone asked me this earlier about, you know, how come you didn't know about the coronavirus? You're meant to be a psychic. And I will tell you very honestly, because I, I don't want to know. I would not have wanted to know about this. I would not have wanted to predict millions of people in Italy lining up and, oh, sorry, seeing, you know, uh, millions of people being locked down in Italy and seeing those images on TV that I've seen in New York. That would have terrified me. And at the end of the day, something that's really important to remember about psychic readings is that sometimes we need to go through certain experiences to evolve here on Earth. And sometimes, and that's why it's important to remember about the tarot cards, the modern founders, the the modern founders of tarot, the tarot has been around for over a thousand years, but people, like the modern format we have with minor and major arcana and all the different cards that we have, that comes from our Arthur Rider Waite and it comes from the, sorry, <laughs> Alexa Crowley, like some of those modern things we have, not all of them, but some of them, and they never intended it to be used for fortune telling. Like fortune telling is not a good reason to use the tarot. Fortune telling can come in accidentally, like predictions, but if you're only using it for fortune telling, it's not going to serve you because, and I'll tell you why, because if you get a negative reading, you could go into incredible trauma without understanding the full, like what the journey is. Like there could be a reason why there's all this negativity going on in your life and you don't know what it is yet. So that fortune telling element just takes away your ability to have power and your ability to change your life and to improve it. So that's why I, I would not do that. But I but I can definitely do a what do we need to know about the coronavirus? Like what is it here to teach us? The quicker we can move through 
through the lessons, the quicker it can be over, those sort of things. I mean, right now, our whole entire beautiful world is in the tower. We're going through a period of the tower because this thing has, like our health systems, our governments, our economy, our bodies and minds and spirits, we're all in the tower. And for whatever reason, as much as it, it, I know people don't like hearing that, but for some reason we've had to do this and we have to reevaluate our world on a level. So that's why those predictive type readings I'm not such a fan of. And I often talk about in my Psychic Readings Intermediate course why I stopped getting those readings of when, I, when will I meet my soulmate because all the things that have... Or, all the stuff that I needed to learn in between wasn't going to be able to happen until I let go of certain things or learnt certain things. So that's, but thank you for asking. But um, definitely if I have to say what, we, what do we need to learn about the coronavirus, we definitely need to learn how to build our foundations around our health system. We need to learn the value of more and more being kindness rather than just constantly taking photos of our lunch. <laughs> Nothing wrong with taking photos of your lunch, but we need to go into a little bit more spiritual kindness and care. And we, you know, there's many things we can learn from this experience. Um, many things we can learn from lockdown. Many things we can learn from watching our health systems and, and recognizing how much we need to more appreciate our doctors and nurses and paramedics and healthcare workers and frontliners, like how much we need to give them more in terms of what they get. Like there's so much going in there. But I something I did earlier when it first started in this group is I said, please don't post pandemic posts here because you might upset people even more. And I'd, I'd hate for that to happen. So I hope that's helped, Walid. Um, but you know what you can do, Walid, is get your cards out and ask them, what do I need to learn personally from the coronavirus? What's it teaching me? And, and see what the cards say. You'll probably get quite a few major arcana cards for that one. Mary, is it common to not be able to read for yourself when you're trying to figure out what's going on with you? <laughs> yes, I've been blocked and unable to read for myself. And no, uh, yes, I mean, that's a great question. For A, there, I mean, there's, some people will read for themselves and not read for others. Some people will only read for others, but not themselves. Some people will do both. I'm a both. But when you are blocked and emotionally attached to an issue, I highly recommend not to read for yourself because you're going to get like the nine of swords about every single card. <gasps> oh my gosh, it says that I'm going to lose my job. Oh my God, that says this. I'm going to get this. Oh my God. It's too much. Like if you're feeling like you're too too much is going on, I would actually personally either go and see a reader or actually see a healer. I would go, and I talk about that a lot in my courses, sometimes the answer is actually going to see a healer to figure out what's going, and getting those fresh set of eyes that are not going to knock you around so much with some of that predictive stuff like I talked about, as I said, with the coronavirus. I, I don't know what I would have done if I, I... I got intuitive hits on stuff, like I remember going to the super... I remember going to the shopping... Um, Myers, uh, like it's a department store and feeling like I would not come back for many months and obviously that's what happened and you know there was a lot of stuff that was intuitive but I you know those predictive stuff sometimes we don't really want to know it all but that's sometimes it can be too much information so I would get a healer or another reader to look Mary and see if that helps if I do a reading for myself this is from Kat like a single card pull for daily guidance and it totally does not resonate should I pull another card or scrap it and start it over okay so Kat, so the first thing is you might not know if it's going to resonate till the end of the day because if you say, what do I need to know about today? And say your day, your day starts off not very good, but by the end of it you hear some really good news, then the card might make more sense at the end. So that can happen. That could be it. Um, and and I, look, I love pulling a daily card for myself. I think it's fantastic. But again, try not to get too freaked out and worried like sometimes like if you pulled a daily card for yourself and got the tower that doesn't mean you're going to lose your job or lose your partner or your car's going to blow up it could be just one small thing that doesn't work out in your favor that puts you back as a setback and you can pick yourself up from it quite relatively quickly so do the card and then go at the end of the day go how did that card connect with my day that's probably an easier way to do it uh, thank you Sadia thank you um, Nick replying, oh, thank you, Minji. Love you too. I, I say, Mary's replying to Nick, I experience this relatively often too. I read for friends and messages flood in. I read for myself and crickets. <laughs> yes. 
golden rules don't ask questions you don't want the answer to oh i love that mary yes look that's you know be really really careful with that well yeah, i like the logic you are right thank you i've done that freak out so i stopped awesome well, thank you, everyone. I hope that's helped so much with those. I'll, I'll quickly recap on those five tips for you. Please don't expect yourself to be accurate too soon. Make practice on Teddy or practice on pretend clients. All the questions you want to ask, practice them on pretend people. And then when you feel like you know the cards, start doing them on real people. Please try not to ask yourself the world most important questions. Like if you're distressed now about when will I find a job and that's that's the most burning thing that's that's eating you alive and you do a reading for yourself but you don't really understand the cards properly, you're probably only going to distress yourself more because you haven't learnt them all and understand all like the, some of the levels that can exist. So start by practising on pretend people first and then when you feel comfortable, go to real people and real, real big questions on that level. Um, making sure that you are creating your own journals. Like please don't ignore this step. It is an absolute game changer for becoming accurate and becoming profoundly good at the tarot. Practice like what does this card mean to me? And start getting used to doing it all the time. Like if you see some you see someone fighting in the street, then you go, Wow, there's a five of swords. <laughs> There's a five of swords going on over there. If your boss is behaving a certain way towards you, go, oh, this is the emperor. Here I go, it's the emperor. So start getting used to bringing and incorporating the tarot into your everyday life. Um, the third one, um, please avoid mass readings like Facebook readings or um, I'm going to, you know, everybody post your photo and I'll comment on it when you're beginning. It's, it's I would say, I mean, if you want to do it, please say, do. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying, as a beginner who was once someone who was once a beginner i've taught a lot of beginners and i've managed a lot of psychics and i and people who also teach psychic development i just feel like it's better to start with one-on-ones get confident with one-on-ones then move into bigger style mass readings so quality not quantity for me um blocks it's natural to have blocks it's normal just be prepared to put a bit of time and energy into healing and fixing them and if you want to be a professional tarot reader i am so excited for you please do it the world does need more tarot readers but just know it's not something that can happen overnight please don't gamble your whole life and future on it it can take time to learn how to run a business i talk about this a lot in manifesting abundance for healers and psychics the course I did on Udemy with Miriam Castilla where we go into all the different money blocks and all the different ways that people can sabotage themselves as psychics and and how it can be harder to sometimes build up a business if you're just doing if you think all I have to do is just learn a few cards and then I've got a business so we go into the practical elements of how to overcome that too um okay Mona um and the fifth oh so the last one is if you're going to be joining groups you know and my, my groups included take two minutes to read the guidelines that way your posts won't get deleted i don't enjoy deleting posts it's, it's one of those probably the least favorite thing in my whole entire job and career is coming on in the morning and seeing three posts that i have to go and delete i don't enjoy doing it um but it's Something that like you create rules in a community when you're an admin because you want to make sure the group flows and everyone's getting the most out of it and it's not just a chaotic shambles. So please read what the guidelines are for each group. Um, now, pleasure. I'm going to answer some questions. No, 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 Autumn, I didn't say that. So Autumn's asking, did you say if we read for ourselves, we cannot read for others? No, no, no. I said there's three different categories, I guess, of readers. There's some readers who will never read for others. They only read personally. They're intuitive readers that just use the cards for themselves. There's some readers who will only read, um, they'll only read for others, but never read for themselves. They don't like reading for themselves. And there's some readers that will read for themselves and read for others. So it's totally up to you what category you fall into. There's no right or wrong. What I was saying earlier was that if you're feeling blocked around an issue, then you might want to get some fresh eyes on it and, and not read for yourself. Um, Prab, do imbalance in chakras affect the readings? Yes, I mean, an imbalance in your third eye could definitely affect your reading because you would be, obviously, if you're blocked in your third eye, then it's harder to get more intuitive readings. So I would say yes, definitely. Imbalance in your chakras can definitely, you know, influence your ability to start a business if you want to start a business. If you've got damage and stuff in your root chakra, your base chakra, that could definitely impact upon it. 
Um, so I hope that's helped, Rob. Sanjay, thank you. <laughs> Alicia, you will practice on your French bulldog. He's very intense. <laughs> Love it. Put a photo of him in the group. <laughs> and you practicing on him. That's beautiful. Oh, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Bulldogs are awesome. Mona, people ask exact timings in their readings what to do. Okay, so this is probably one of the biggest challenges that readers have, um, especially when you're a beginner. So in the beginning, just focus on the general, as I said, this is why you shouldn't be asking really big name serious questions when you're getting started because you just want to go, okay, what's going to happen in the next three months? What's going to happen in the next six months? What's going to happen in the next 12 months? So like keep it very general like that. So in the Celtic Cross and in the Horseshoe, I talk about how to do that. Um, so at, at the very basic level, just stick with that for now. But if people are saying, no, I need to know when now, I have a course called Psychic Readings Intermediate Level. That's one of the ones that follows this. And I go into more about how to handle those when questions. Uh, you can do things on seasons and stuff like that. For me, it's often intuition. Practicing your intuition is when that comes in. So I remember once someone said to me, well, I did your course, and then, but I don't understand. Like, it didn't teach me. Like, I, I went and saw a reader ages ago, and they told me that in the, you know, late August this is going to be happening to me. And I'm like, okay, there's not actually a tarot card that says late the 23rd of August. There's no card that says that. <laughs> that comes from intuition and practicing, and then it comes in as, oh, that's when it feels like it's going to be. There are cards that do represent star signs. And as I said, you can learn about that a bit more in Psychic Readings Intermediate level. Generally, to keep yourself, if someone's really persisting, ask them to say, what do I need to know? What do I need to know about finding a job? And if something shows up really quickly in the immediate future, then you can see that for them. That'll come up really obviously. So just do the what do I need to know? But look, um, Mona, in all of my intermediate courses, my Love Readings course, my health course and in my psychic readings intermediate level, they all talk about how to answer love readings, like when will I get married, how to do that, like the specifics of that, how to do, you know, if, with your health, when will I get better, things like that, when will I get a job, like, so look at those if you want to go more into that or when will I get pregnant, stuff like that. Uh, Alicia, he's very <laughs> into your bulldogs, very into eye contact and he's judgmental so it'll be like a real human. <laughs> Oh, please post a picture of him. <laughs> I love it. He'll be like your most your most uh, harshest critic. <laughs> Good practice. Kat, many thanks for the fabulous info and your precious time. Blessed be. Thank you. Love your courses. Thank you, Mercedes. Hi, Minotti. Thank you. Okay, so Miriam, if you have a huge fear of reading people face-to-face, -face, do you have any guidance? Okay, First of all, make a decision and say, okay, do I really have to do face-to-face -face readings? Maybe I could do phone readings or email readings, like I spoke about previously. So you could start off by doing that, by just doing phone and email. But if it, if it becomes an, what you feel like is an essential part of your business or an essential part of practicing, then I would suggest looking at my EFT course about boosting your psychic gifts with EFT tapping and replacing the, like I give you all, I give you like dozens of PDFs and dozens of different modality rituals that you can use. And I would do the one, I'm afraid to read face to face. I'm afraid they're judging me. I'm afraid that I'm going to get it wrong. I'm, I'm too scared to do it. It makes me feel terrified. And just work on bringing down the emotional anxiety because that's, that's, that's all it is. It's probably just an emotional anxiety. There might be something deeper behind the scenes that you need to go and see a healer about or maybe do a past life regression about, but it could just be an actual, just a natural anxiety. And, and I have come across psychics before who have this. And as I said, a lot of them just decide to just do phone readings or email readings, or as I said, go deeper and look at, okay, can I do a bit of my own self healing on this to see if it shifts it? And as I said, if you do if you if you do some tapping or something like that, and then start with someone gentle and tell them I'm a beginner, and then you know let them know you're nervous, and that way it kind of puts it out on the table for you. So I hope that helps, honey. So Mary, you want to do a Zoom group for people and talk about cards and reading styles. Talking as a group gives good feedback. 
It's totally okay, but please don't advertise it in here. I mean, that's that's the problem because then everyone does it and then suddenly I've got 60 different, I've had this happen by the way, 60 different Zoom groups and then everyone's, what often happens is that because it's in my group here, people then email me, I was in this person's Zoom group and this is what they did and it's not fair. And I'm like, hey, I'm not even in that Zoom group. <laughs> so what you can do, Mary, when you do readings for people, tell them about the Zoom group. So let them know. Say, hey, I'm doing this thing when you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, but if, as long as if you can just not broadcast it in here, just so that people don't associate me with your Zoom group. I know that sounds weird, but it just stops me having to answer people's emails and thinking that I'm kind of part of it. Um, so yeah, but you're very welcome to, when you do practice readings with people, just drop it in, let them know and, and do it that way. So, is it normal having more real dreams after starting the tarot dream? Yes, Raquel, absolutely. It is really normal. <laughs> and that's because, as I said, tarot has a huge connection with soul language and intuition and, and symbols. So, yes, your dreams can become very intense when you start reading. Absolutely. Uh, Mona, thank you. Thanks. You have a anxiety about doing it via Facebook Messenger. I have anxiety around doing about Facebook Messenger. I think many people in this group know how I feel about Facebook Messenger. <laughs> I'm, I think if you could do it by email instead of typing it via Messenger, that is better. Um, or you could do a Zoom. Like Zoom might be better than doing via Facebook Messenger. I find Zoom to be more private. But as I said, don't feel like you have to do this straight away. Like maybe even a WhatsApp phone. Like a, if you could do a WhatsApp um, or a Viber if you're on Viber or WhatsApp and just do a phone thing where there's no video. That's totally fine. Or email. That's totally fine as well. Thank you, Autumn. Hi. Understandable. Thanks for the advice. Thank you, Mary, for understanding. I know it's a strange rule. It came from earlier in when I started How to Be Psychic and a student decided to start their own, advertising their own group thing. And then all this stuff went down and it went a bit pear-shaped and everyone kind of dragged me in the middle. And I was kind of like, okay, I've just got to make sure that people, any kind of advertising you do for other groups that I'm a big fan of, but just don't put it in my group. <laughs> it's because I don't want to have to navigate it because I don't even know what's going on in that other thing. <laughs> so yes, just let people know one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, uh, Samantha, you'll come back and watch the beginning. Awesome. It'll be here for you. So thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate your time. I know some of you, it's late where you are. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube or as the replay, just type replay if you've got any questions for me. And again, thank you so much for everything and for joining the course. And I hope you're getting a lot out of it. And have a good dinner time for Mary. <laughs> it's lunchtime for me here in Australia. I'm about to start my weekend. So have a wonderful weekend for you, everyone out there and thanks again for joining me. Bye.